You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for March 6th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we're already in the 40th year of an anti-government revolution, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. You you mentioned that this week to me, yeah. and it kind of stunned me that the Steve Bannon Ronald Reagan revolution is something yeah. we've been living through for forty years. Yes. And I went, oh yeah, you're right. Oh, that's right. There is a there was someone who 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 stood on a platform and, and waved his fist and said, "Government is the problem. The system must be destroyed. Everything is everything is the fault of 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 the system, and it must be overthrown." And that person was Ronald Wilson Reagan. Mm-hmm. And he and he succeeded. He succeeded mm-hmm. because he got a whole because his his solution to the problem of government was to have um, markets run everything, wealthy right. people run everything, corporations run everything. And there's a apparently there's an awful lot of money to be had if you go tell wealthy people that you would like to give them more power. We just wrote a big check to Big Pharma to for for the immunizations and the tests. It's yes, like we no, we're just going to throw money at you to fix this because yeah. government is incompetent to fix it. Because we've set up the government with a reality TV star mm-hmm. in charge who doesn't know what he's doing and thinks he can magical realism this problem away. And when you begin the predicate by the government is the problem, mm-hmm. you have mm-hmm. just wiped out anyone who might think you, you've just eliminated from the conversation anyone who thinks well maybe governments exist among people to help us solve the problems that we individually cannot solve maybe that's why you have governments this is the disruption revolution this is the fuck experts and people technocrats and those assholes who think they know best throw them all out and just let a bunch of clowns who have sort of a loose idea of what they want to do just get in there and just do stuff and magically somehow it'll all work out you don't have uh, uh Trump never had a plan. His plan was put me in there and I'll do deals. It'll be great. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that, mm-hmm. and that's all you need. Uh, ignore all the shit on my resume about what well, I'm a, I'm a liar and a, a, an adulterer and a thief and a scumbag and a traitor. And I run up bankruptcy bills and I've scammed poor people. Ignore all that. Ignore everything about my record that might make you think I'm lying. Just focus on the fact that all you need to do to make the revolution is do good deals. Oh really? It's that simple? Oh, absolutely! It's it's so easy. It's so you won't even believe how easy. We'll go to North Korea. We'll make great deals. We'll go. We'll go to the Taliban. We'll make great deals. We'll pull out of all these crazy treaties that that have gotten us all stymied and 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 killed free enterprise, and it'll all work out great. And you promised perfect, wonderful health care. Sure, and it's coming at, at a fraction of the cost. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. You just need to give me more power. That's that's the key to all revolutions. Is once they start to stumble, the answer is, well, I need, I need more power. Obviously, I need more authority. I need more. I need to purge the government of all the disloyal people. I need to get rid of all the people who have some doubts about the, the, the direction my revolution is taking. And that's what happens. And this idea of, we're, oh, we're going to cut Medicare and Medicaid. And it's in my budget mm-hmm. in the line items that I'm going to cut Medicare and Medicaid. And... Uh, then mm-hmm. I'm going to deny that I ever said that, and no, I'm only here to protect your Medicare and Medicaid. You have created a financial crisis with tax cuts for billionaires, which forces you, quote unquote, to cut Medicare and Medicaid. All of that is a Republican dream list of things to do. Oh, this yeah. is Paul that's, Ryan's budget. That's the Bush, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the Bush administration. That was the first Bush administration. That was the Reagan administration. That's why you Republicans, that's why Republicans mm-hmm. create deficits in order to have a, an excuse to cut the programs they hate. So Trump is not doing anything other than what Republican revolutionaries want yeah. it done, shorn of all of the pretense that has anything to do with liberty or freedom or the Constitution, because they never, ever gave a shit about any of that stuff. Revolutionaries don't. They don't those things are impediments. Yeah. 
to the to the great cause. Those things get in the way. The whole idea that you're going to work inside the government where there's all these limitations and restrictions, you have to debate shit and you have to get sixty votes and there's and that, 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 there's all this shit you have to go through to get anything Steve done. Steve Bannon doesn't believe in any of that. No, he's deconstructing the administrative state. He's getting rid of all of it. So that there's a smooth, efficient transmission belts between the whims of the dear leader mm -hmm. and the execution of policy and there's nothing to stand in between them and and you you just do that by destroying the justice department you destroy the intelligence agency the credibility of them which were, was already dicey to begin with but you simply say and every time the revolution fails this is straight out of fucking animal farm every time it fails it's the system it's a conspiracy it's fake news it's not because I fucked up. It's not because the whole idea is stupid and dangerous and actually puts people's lives in, in peril. It's no, 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 no. It's all a conspiracy to make it this way. And if you just give me more authority, more power, more, if you just honor my whims more, if we just purge more disloyal people, eventually it'll all work out. And it never does. And the problem is revolutionaries never learn. They never figure out what the problem, because the answer to all questions is always going to be make a revolution, make a bigger revolution, make a better revolution. I have, I'm in favor of all the goals of the revolutionaries on my side. I'm looking for the fine print. <laughs> you know, I'm looking for the plan to get 60 people in the Senate. I'm looking for the plan to get rid of the filibuster. I'm looking for lots of plans. And that's what has me a little freaked out, because I don't see a lot of detail. I don't see any more detail about um, our revolution that I saw about Reagan's revolution or Trump's revolution. Just give me, give me authority to do stuff, get out of my way and something, 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 it'll all work out. And I'm not young enough or naive enough to believe that shit anymore. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. like to see the fine print. I'd like to see which parts of the car are you going to fix? I'd like to get an estimate before I give you my vehicle. And if you think me asking those questions makes me disloyal, or counter-revolutionary. Or that you don't that want health care for me, everybody. I mean, that's the one I've heard a lot. Yeah. You, 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 you want babies in cages. If me simply asking those questions in a forceful way makes me the enemy, then you have just told me everything I need to know about your revolution. You know, as well as I do, we have two kids now that are going to vote for Sanders. Yes. Uh, and and good for I them. totally support that. Uh I'm probably going to vote for Warren in the Illinois primary on the 17th. Mm -hmm. This is a primary election. It's a primary it's a election. Primary I get to election. do what I want. Right. <laughs> I do want, once again, to hopefully help people manage expectations when it comes to Medicare and mm -hmm. Medicare for all. Because, and I've said this many times before, Bernie's bill phases in Medicare for all over four to five years, depending mm -hmm. on when you get it passed and when it starts. Mm -hmm. And I am terrified by what I see online from people who believe that electing one person or passing one agenda is going to and snap everybody's got health care. That's not in the bill. That's not how a bill becomes a law. That's not how the process of getting this passed is going to end up. And uh, it's interesting. Warren's plan, she had a whole bunch of things that she was going to do on day one to expand health insurance for people. Mm -hmm. And one of her items was, you know, Bernie's plan lowers the Medicare eligibility age to 55 in the first year. Right. And hers was 50. Mm -hmm. And I th read that and I thought, I wonder if she's asking for more than she knows she's going to get. Yeah. So that she can, from that position, negotiate to what Bernie has asked for, which is 55. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we don't know what kind of a Senate we're going to have. We don't know if any of this is going to be possible. No, we don't. So or, to be fair, any of Joe Biden's plans are going to be possible. And are, that's what Charlie Pierce said. Charlie Pierce yeah. says, look. Joe, your plan isn't going to pass the, the House and Senate right. any any more easily than than anything else. So anyway, as I said, I've given up worrying about the Democratic primary race for Lent. And right. uh, I am doing postcards to voters uh, for down ballot races, mm -hmm. uh, which I, has been so therapeutic for me um, because I feel like I'm really making a difference. Just writing to 15 or 20 
voters at a time and telling them, please vote for this Supreme Court, state Supreme Court uh, candidate. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, so, you know, there are things we can be doing besides obsessing about what other people are saying online. And I guess that's where I want to go with this. Um, Yeah. I and think I did it's, talk it's, to Junior Dude today. He got his ballot. Yep. He voted he for Bernie. Put it in the mm-hmm. mail. He he has vote by mail. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and don't you think it's interesting? I know I'm jumping all over the place here, but don't you think it's interesting huh. that uh, here in Illinois we have a Democratic governor who is now ha- putting forward a budget that provides free community college. Oh yeah, for well, any that's... family making under forty five thousand dollars a year, free community college. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, things are happening, moving in the direction that all of us want to go. Let me just say, mm-hmm. I am a huge believer in community college. Yeah, I have I have attended community colleges uh, during my years as a workforce development genius. Yeah, <laughs> um, the, the, the key component in making the plans work, in addition to building public private partnerships and making people work across lines and getting labor to cooperate with business owners, all of which we did. Um, the key component was building a community college curriculum around what we wanted to do, manufacturing specifically, mm-hmm. and then transportation, distribution, et cetera, that was in line with current industry standards. Literally, you get industry certification with your credits Mm -hmm. at the community college right and getting them to change was a fucking nightmare it wasn't their business model at all that had that they were very very set in their way so and community colleges are also capable of changing fast enough to keep up with market changes to keep up with what business needs next week or next Uh month and so i think it's a huge thing i'm a big believer in it i don't believe community colleges where people go who have no other option i think it's a vocational track that every other country, every other industrialized country has. That's right. And already. The fact that J.D. Yeah. Pritzker says, hey, let's make this free. Uh, let's make it free to anyone below a certain income Yeah, it's $45,000 it so a year is the yeah. is the absolute cutoff for free. Now, there's yeah. obviously there's grants and so forth for people making more than that. Mm-hmm. But uh, free is the $45,000 level. Now, I had a discussion with someone online about four-year colleges and how community right. colleges don't prepare people for four-year colleges very well. And, mm-hmm. uh, and the four-year college needs to be free and so on and so forth. And the point is that JB Pritzker, as I said to her, is getting through the state legislature, what his budget can do uh, right. given revenues that he has. Yes. And <laughs> the other thing is that these, the, the need and the demand right now in Illinois is for two year degrees, 18 month degrees that right. get people into a job. Yes. So yes, you're yes, a phlebotomist. Yes. You're going to, you're going to draw blood for a living in, in a lab, mm-hmm. in a hospital, or you're going to be an HVAC person and fix uh, air conditioning units, which can't, that's a job that cannot be outsourced. Those jobs mm-hmm. cannot be outsourced. They can't even be outsourced to another state. If you're, if the air conditioning systems in Illinois, that's where it's got to be fixed. So uh, those kind of programs are what a, a majority of people who come from modest means, they want to get into a job uh, right. that pays well. And uh, these, these community college positions, these things where you can get in and out in 18 months or two years and be employable is, mm-hmm. is what's in, in demand. So and, and or you can get your... Um, requirements out of the way right cheaply and then because you're not paying eight hundred dollars a credit hour for english right right um and then transfer those over to a four-year college yeah and, and this this person online was saying that a lot of students who do that actually ultimately fail in in the four-year college mode um and i'm sure that's true i'm sure there are people that drop out after they their two-year because the demands of the paycheck and needing a paycheck and so forth happens you know that yeah. it's hard to stay in college for four years if you don't have a supportive financial possibility for yourself but yes. um we need to move on there have been so many things going on this week uh brit hume overshares 
uh, his, yeah, his wait, love for wait. vinyl. Yeah, vinyl on ladies' bottoms is great. Vi- okay. Vinyl sexy nymphs. You get yourself. You get your. You you go, but don't please don't take a screenshot of your uh, computer screen ever again, Brit Hume. Well, you know, um, learn how to put it into a clipping um, <laughs> graphic software and clip off all the parts. That, crop it. Yeah, crop that crop shit. It. Crop that shit. <laughs> Um, uh, and I wanted to mention that Super Tuesday um, humbled the mighty. Yeah. Uh, as a broad huge topic. surprise. Huge surprise. Um, yeah. And I don't mean um, candidates, although Mike Bloomberg going down in flames was a was a delight. <laughs> um, really. I mean, and Elizabeth Warren should be put in charge of taking out Republican assholes. <laughs> really. <laughs> Just made, put her in the cabinet and she's like the button man. You know, she's. Okay, here's we're sending the mechanic. All right, but I'm so tired of this already. I'm I'm so uh-huh. tired of people trying to give Elizabeth Warren another job than the job she already has, the one that she wanted, yes. which is U.S. Senator. And there yes. were, it was trending yesterday that people want her to be Senate Majority Leader. No, 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 no she doesn't no, no, want no, that no, job. No. That's a that no. is a thankless job. You have to do yes. committee assignments, and you have administrative bullshit you have to deal with, and you have to make senators happy with their with their chairmanships that don't want to be in that chair they want to be in another chair and you know that belongs to somebody who has no vision <laughs> yeah and who's a, who's, who's, a, who's a mechanic, a right. mechanic. And who's, who yeah. does, has no ambition to to change the world you know he wants to sit in the senate and move seats around and cajole with his community uh of senators that's fine but it is a very administrative job and she does i wouldn't want that if i were elizabeth warren no. so no. And I'm just saying that that when Barack Obama talked about putting Bill Clinton in charge of explaining things. Yes, right. You're know, the right. secretary of explaining things. Right. Elizabeth Warren is extraordinarily effective at explaining things. Yes, she's she is. She's a teacher. She is. She's really good at it. She's incredibly smart. And honestly, if we lived in a better universe, she would have been – she would already have won the nomination. Exactly. I'd be well on her way to the White House. That is my sincere preference. Elizabeth Warren, first woman president, smart as hell, can – kick ass and take names and explain what she's doing in such a way that an averagely bright eight-year-old can understand what she's and doing. And I, I appreciate you saying that. And I know you believe that, Drift Class. There's just a whole mm-hmm. lot of men out there who are happy to say that today now that she's dropped out. Oh, I know. And I know. But I'm, I'm saying over in the better universe, I'm, over I'm in just, the alternate timeline. I'm just angry. I'm, I and I, a lot of I women know. are. A lot of women didn't get off the couch yesterday. I forced myself to not yeah. cry yesterday. I told you, no, I'm not going to cry. You kept mm-hmm. checking on me and checking on me, and I just told you, fuck no, I'm not going to cry about this. And mm-hmm. it is, I want to be angry, and I'm going to continue to be angry because that's how I'm going to get shit done. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm going to do, as I said, postcards to voters because that's therapeutic, and I know that that's the kind of thing that your mother would want me to do. And well, that's the thing. That's the thing. <laughs> I'm know. watching the TV yesterday. We both looked at each other and go, oh, my God, that's my mom. Elizabeth Warren being interviewed by Rachel Maddow is Drift Glass's mom, everybody. It is. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. Down to the intonations and the, the sense of joy and energy is mm-hmm. just like, wow, that just hit me hard. Yeah. Um, and when I say Super Tuesday, humble the mighty, I didn't mean – her. Although, again, again, I, I'm not going to go off on a Mike Bloomberg track. I mean, people like, oh, let's say uh, Hugh Hewitt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 48 hours before um, Joe Biden swept Super Tuesday. And to everyone's surprise, let's let's be say, oh, yeah, Mr. Hewitt was swaggeringly confident in his opinion in the Washington Post that uh, here's the title of it. Enjoy it, Joe Biden, because it won't last. <laughs> and what, what Biden had to do. In in, uh, in in South Carolina, because Super Tuesday hadn't happened yet, was have a smashing a victory over a repudiation of, of Bernie Sanders and the entire field, deal a crushing blow to the hopes of every other would-be nominee, and prompt several of them to drop out. That, sir, didn't happen. Yeah, it Except did. 48 hours later, <laughs> it did happen. Yeah, it did. And Hugh Hewitt, Hugh Hewitt does not – well, and this doesn't bother Hugh Hewitt or affect his employment in any way. Having these – horribly bad takes um which really kind of runs parallel to david brooks's horribly bad take on bernie sanders is joseph stalin yeah never bernie ever oh. yeah it's so bad and and that's in in moments like that i really do in my own way step all the way back and go and look try to look at the entire media landscape and try to deduce what machinery must be cooking along behind the scenes that continues to pay Hugh Hewitt 
and Michael Gerson and Joe Scarborough and David Brooks for their daily insults to our our country and to their alleged profession. What is it that's going on behind the curtain that keeps these assholes employed? Don't and, don't leave out Peter Baker. Oh no, no, let's <laughs> let's go right to Peter Baker, shall we? <laughs> Here's the exact quote. Okay. I try hard not to take strong positions on public issues, even in private. Much of the frustration of friends and family. For me, it's easier to stay out of the fray if I never make up my mind, even in the privacy of the kitchen or the voting booth, that one candidate is better than another, that one side is right and the other is wrong. That reporting that something is true or right and something is wrong or false is literally your job. It literally his job to decide whether something is a lie or not. Yes. Mm -hmm. to, to, to report on it. Yeah. This statement coming out of this person's pie hole at this moment is a lie. Mm -hmm. The statement this person is making is true. That is your fucking job. And again, I look at the, at the broad canvas of the media and I wonder how is it? What happened to these people what farm are they grown on that they are completely bereft of human anything that they just sit on their little chairs and work their keyboards and come up with this insane bullshit that it is not my job as a person working under the auspices of the first amendment to tell the public information it needs to know to tell them this person is lying and those lies may kill you and this person is telling you the truth about that liar that's not my job. My job isn't to make up. My, well, then what is your job? I don't take sides Literally, on anything. <laughs> ever. In the kitchen, yeah. in the bedroom, and in the bathroom. Wipe myself? Not. Who's to say? <laughs> Wash my hands? I don't know. And I just, I, I picture him. says no. On the other hand, the CDC says yes. I don't know what to do. I, I don't know why Peter Baker hasn't starved to death by now, sitting right. in front of a his pantry with, well, here's rat poison and here's an apple. I just don't know what to eat. Yeah. And just, yeah. I give up. And he's, and this is, again, this is a person who's paid rather a substantial amount right. of money to write his opinions on he, pieces of paper. And he's on and Brian Williams' public. show every night. Yeah. He's the lead yeah. off commentator. Yep. And it is, it is astounding to me that, that at this late date, this is not, the Bill Clinton administration anymore. We're a quarter of a century out of that now. And let's now. be clear, it is racist to do this. Oh, it oh, is yeah. enabling white nationalism to do this. That is mm -hmm. the at its core. What you are saying is, well, on the one hand, black people say they're oppressed and they're being prevented from voting. On the other hand, Republicans disagree. Donald Trump says Nazis are some very good people. On the other hand, Heather Heyer is dead. This is where he claims he sits. And this is where, by extension, he is asserting that this is what journalism should be. Right. right. The act of doing journalism should be a completely, it shouldn't be biased, but it is not biased to say, if you eat the rat poison, you will get sick. If you eat the apple, you will not. That is not biased. That is reporting factual information. Mm -hmm. And- these people at the entire Washington press corps, for the most part, have disappeared so far up their ass and are, because it's such a comfortable place to be mm -hmm. because you never have to be right about anything. You never have to choose anything. You never have to actually um, take a risk. You never have to, to inflect anything. You just have to blandly poop out tapioca about, well, this might be bad or it might be good. Who's to say? And, and at the end of the week, there's a big pile of money sitting on your desk and I, I just don't know, other than the corporate media and the Republican Party, frankly, whose interests are served mm -hmm. by, by torching the media, by, by um, gelding the media to the point where they don't even think that – they think it's, that it is illegitimate to report the news. Right, right. <laughs> and that's right. – I, I don't know where to go beyond – But you know who isn't can, doing that? Sean Hannity isn't doing that. No, he's a bold. Sean he's Hannity. Bold no, but Sean Hannity taker. is taking a side. Yes. If well, he's if not a journalist, people, he's, a, he's an entertainer. <laughs> if the but if the people who could look at the world and say, "Okay, really, this is a lie, and this uh -huh. is true," are saying, mm -hmm. "No, I really can't make a decision like that in public because that means I am no longer 
a disinterested reporter. I'm actually an advocate. And 30% of America is getting their quote unquote news from somebody who says Donald Trump is God. And if you don't vote for him, you're going to hell. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we are with journalism. There just isn't the, the people who should be telling us genuinely what is real and what isn't have, have left the battlefield. And that's and, why you have a net roots. And that's why you had a net roots with Bush. The people who were supposed to tell us, no, there are no WMDs, <laughs> didn't. Or, didn't, failed, and paid no price. Well, and they, they still aren't. And yeah. the, we, we know people, we go to church with people mm -hmm. whose, whose excuse for this is, well, I, 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 I read everything. I have seven different news sources, you know, and, and you know, no, you don't. Yeah. You, you have, all, no, you you have don't. Fox yeah. News and you have a Sean Hannity on the radio and you have Rush Limbaugh and then you sort of peer over the transom to hear what, what liberals are talking about so you can be informed. Well, really, well, you you let Geraldo Rivera be the liberal voice in your head when he's right. on. That's that's the and 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 you will always find you will always find a nice, reasonable, cowardly safe house, a nice spider hole in which to hide when your lives blow up. Because all you have to do is throw up your hands and say nobody knows anything, everything's controversial, everyone's to blame, all sides are awful, and it, and that's just the, the safety blanket and and that. Going back 10 years, Blue Gal, or 15 years, if you're talking about podcasting time, getting burning down that lifeboat, getting rid of that security blanket, tearing it off of them and saying, no, you don't get to say both sides anymore, ever. You did, that is now an illegitimate you – think, you think holding an opinion is illegitimate? Holding the opinion that both sides are the same is now illegitimate. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to do that anymore. That's my goal. And let me be very clear about that. My goal is to drive these people into the open, make them take a position, because these are the people who will vote for Republicans right up until everything falls apart and then throw up their hands and say, well, you know, everybody's awful. Everything's bad. No one knows what's right or wrong. Who's to say, look at me. I'm a member of a Tea Party. I'm an independent. I'm a, I'm a constitutional conservative. Right. I had nothing to do with this. Bush who? I don't know who Bush is. Trump? Trump who? I don't know who Trump is. That's what um, Brother Charlie Pierce was talking about this week. Mm. Uh, he he did he put up a lovely article um, where we got uh, some of our inspiration for our title. Uh, he's the title is Trumpism is Republicanism inflated with poison gas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and our never Trump friends are going to have to come to grips with this sometime. Except, no, they won't. Yeah, no, yeah. they unless they are forced to, unless they are given no way out. Every exit burned, every lifeboat sunk. Then they'll have to deal with it. But as God is my witness, right now in the in the boat building yards, in the in in, in factories all over this country, they're building another bush off machine. Absolutely. They're building another Donald Trump. I, I, I never like the tweets. They're calling it's it Trumpism. Not, yeah. Oh, and that term, which you correctly pointed out before donald trump was ever elected in august of 2016 i said don't you dare call it trumpism yeah. it is and the republican agenda that is going on yeah and when i do my duty my my public service by actually putting on my hazmat suit and listening to conservative podcasts <laughs> um i really, I really want some news organization to send you to one of the Three conservative conferences. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I know which one I want to go to. Which one do you want to go to? I want to go to the Bulwark podcast. Because <laughs> they're the most self-righteous of all of them. Yeah. They, they, this last weekend, I think we might have mentioned it in passing, this last weekend was the big, big uh, conference competition. There were three separate conferences all going out at the same time, all claiming to be the true conservative conference. And there was the CPAC convention and that that was trump trump that was trump yeah. that was charlie charlie kirk and trump and um performance art reading aloud from uh fbi texts yeah. and imitating intercourse on stage mm -hmm. that's cpac and i've been writing about cpac since i started blogging it's always been a shit show it's always been an embarrassment but our, our never Trump friends remember it much more fondly than that. <laughs> it used to be a glorious time of an argument. We used to 
joust on the field like gentlemen and ladies over ideas and Burke versus this. No, it was always a shit show because your your movement has always been a fucking fraud. So CPAC is just the monster without the makeup. Then there was the Bulwark podcast staff meeting, which they renamed the Principled Conservative uh, Conference. Blah. Which they held like, <laughs> th- yeah, which they held half a mile away at some shared workspace downtown uh, in Washington, D.C., of course, because nothing happens outside of Washington, D.C. worth mentioning. And it was this all the same people. It was it was the you know Charlie Sykes and uh, and Rick Wilson and <laughs> Bill Crystal and all the people, all the folks. It's the people who worked for the Weekly Standard, which was gutted and destroyed once Trump came to office that repurposed itself as the Bulwark podcast, the Bulwark online, which gets a free hand job every week, whether they like it or not, from Brian Williams on MSNBC, yeah, which is something yeah. we never get. So and I they're, don't want one. No, I don't either. <laughs> really, I don't. And they're the most indignant and self-righteous about but what they are. So so if if um if CPAC is the monster without the makeup, mm-hmm. then then the principled conservative bulwark people are the people worshiping the makeup table. Yeah. Right. They're like looking longingly at the mascara and the grease paint going, this used to be conservatism. No, it was the camouflage mm-hmm. that the monster used to take over America and destroy it. It is the, this is not conservatism. So they're just arguing over what it really means and what principled conservative means and how much we believe in liberty. And every now and then, Charlie Sykes rings his hands and goes, was it all a lie? Was it all just a lie? I don't think so. But some people do. And then they get off on some liberal track. Well, yeah, at least we're not liberals. I mean, fuck. You know, that's <laughs> at least we're not that, right? Because God knows those people are screwed up. And then there was the Michelle Malkin conference for the people who need their white supremacy straight up. Deutschland, for, for, for Deutschland. Whom, Ooh, oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, for whom that is that is the be-all and end-all. Um, and wasn't and she so talking I, about camps and... Yeah, she was talking about how, what it means. To, why why can't we uh, stand up and question whether or not the Holocaust killed X number of people? Mm-hmm. Why can't we talk about dual loyalty to and, other and, countries? And they're really getting off on the Muslim ban big time. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's a, it's a straight-up white supremacist yeah. um, freak show yeah. for people who don't think that CPAC is white supremacist freak show enough. Yeah. And again, there's there's this tiny rump battalion of enough people to fill out a hockey team who are gathering in a hotel talking about we're the real true conservatives. Yeah, right. Because we believe in liberty and we believe in individual freedom. We Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you've had 40 years to pull this off. What has it got you? What's gotten you is you are living, as we said at the top of this podcast, you're living through the apotheosis of your own revolution. Mm-hmm. This is what has become of your revolution, the Reagan revolution. The government is the problem revolution. Congratulations. It was always going to go here. We have been warning you for decades that it would end up here. And now here we are. Mm-hmm. And so I do my duty, Blue Gal, to listen to these people. And by God, you will never hear the word Republican on these people's lips ever talking about their former party. Right. Everything is Trumpism. Everything is Trumpy and Trumpiness and Trumpness and Trumpism. And it's as if the Republican Party simply does not exist anymore. And they, they really believe it doesn't. They really believe that somehow Donald Trump hypnotized them and mesmerized them and overnight turned their lovely Republican, liberty-loving, deficit-hating, um, um, Burke-quoting party mm-hmm. into, this, into this hideous, slouching beast. Full and, of bigots and racists. Yep. Yeah. And yep. they don't want to talk to anyone who will remind them that everything they believe is bullshit mm-hmm. and it always was which is that's that's the one i want to go to i want to be the asshole in the audience i don't want to run on stage and say let dairy die <laughs> okay. I want to run on stage we and have say, to be very careful about what we say about that too because middle child is yeah. uh a radical vegan and well, you uh, know what i had a talk with middle child about that oh and she said this is what gives vegans a bad name ah okay she says this kind of and I, I, she might have used the word bullshit. I don't know where she would learn such a oh thing. Oh, my but, goodness. Um, this is the kind of thing that, you know, it, and, and we had a good talk about, you know, animal cruelty and yep. Ezra Klein she's and really, veganism. She really is into that. Like, she's and, wired into the online and way, vegan. Well, and there's a way to do this and there's a way not to do it. Mm-hmm. And the way not to do it is to run on stage and make a jerk of yourself. 
because it just sets everyone else back. Yeah, she's, like, oh. she, I was I was kind of shocked. I got her a vegan T-shirt a couple of years ago for Christmas, and it was from PETA, and she had a real problem with PETA being on there because she doesn't like their tactics. And she, she likes she, their website. She does like their website, and she likes uh, she does wear that shirt because it says vegan on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she is, and she does not wear leather, and she does not wear wool. Nope. She does. She won't wear. She's very much an animal rights activist, and uh, takes it very seriously, and does not do dairy. Um, no. So she, uh, you know, I think she goes along with with the politics of it. But uh, it's interesting to watch ki- our kids evolve in terms of what they ex- what they expect from political action and what they don't. And I, I'm pretty much just letting them come to their own conclusions about a lot of things you know well and she does activism in a way that i'm very proud of she Mm -hmm. cooks tasty vegan meals yes she does us to eat them and they're good and she's you know batting she has a high batting average when it comes to making vegan meals and she doesn't she just when you or i show a willingness to to talk about animal cruelty she has all the facts and figures and ready she does but she doesn't bludgeon people right she just says you know if you think of yourself as someone who who is against cruelty, yeah, maybe you should think about you know getting stopping meat in your diet. Yeah. It's bad for you. It's bad for the environment. It's bad for the earth, and on and on and on. Yep. She has all of the ammunition in her belt that she needs. She she knows in depth what goes on on factory farms. Right. and can tell you fa- chapters, but she doesn't. That's not what she drops on the table first. What she drops on the table first is delicious, delicious macaroni vegan, and cheese. Delicious <laughs> vegan macaroni and cheese. Like vegan. wow, this yeah. is really good. Yeah, it is. And so we go to Food Fantasies and we shop there and, and we're having Our more and more. Our health food store is Food Fantasies, yeah. Yes. Um, so I don't want to be the at the the uh, principled conservative conference, the guy who dashing across the stage <laughs> with a sign that says, Dairy must die. I want to be the guy dashing across the stage that says, remember Tom DeLay? <laughs> yeah. Anybody here got a fucking clue who the hell Tom DeLay was? No. Do you remember, uh, remember Strom Thurmond? Anybody, anybody, show of hands. Anyone here remembers Strom fucking Thurmond? Anybody? Anybody remember Paul Ryan? You knew him. Hey, Charlie Sykes, you are personally responsible for his goddamn career in Wisconsin. Anyone remember who these people are? No, of course you don't. Yeah. Because they're the they're the specter at your fucking little banquet here. They're the spirit hanging over this this august proceeding, proving that your movement has been shit all along. And we all know it. I want to be that guy at the conference. I did love how Nancy Pelosi did a signing ceremony for the coronavirus money. Yes. I mean, that was just some serious shade. <laughs> yeah. She's she's amazing. She didn't hold it up and, yeah. you know, her signature, hold it up and look around the room. But she she did an amazing thing. I really like her attitude towards the Democratic primary race, too, which is mm-hmm. I'm fine with Bernie. I'm fine with Biden. I'm fine right. with either one of them. And she had a lot to say about women in politics yesterday because she's quite an expert in that. There is an article in The New Yorker, and I'm not going to quote it right. Uh, I'm not going to quote it at all. But we read it and discussed it this week about Abraham Lincoln and Thaddeus Stevens and yeah. how yeah. Uh, the radical Republicans who were the uh, strong, yeah. radical, anti-slavery wing of the Republican Party in Congress – Yes, the abolitionists. The yes. abolitionists who Thaddeus Stevens wanted to arm slaves to fight their masters. He thought the yep. government should do that. And mm-hmm. uh, there was a senator from Ohio who also would put himself in charge of firing generals from Lincoln's army who were there for profit. And mm-hmm. nope, we're here to fight a war against the South. Let's go. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. That was it. Yep, yep. So these radical Republicans were the ones who really won the war and won freedom for the slaves. And Mm -hmm. that Lincoln was really dragged, not kicking and screaming, but he was dragged toward the Emancipation Proclamation. He was. And that he would rather have preserved the Union without freeing one slave because that's just too much change. Right. And so... uh, it really comforted me to read that because I feel as though we are being led to a nominee, frankly, who uh, is not my first choice, is not my second choice, no. uh, and will be much more conciliatory toward Republicans than I want him to be. And then I think, OK, the squad is in the House. Nancy Pelosi's in charge of the House. Every person who 
is holding one of the 40 seats that we flipped in 2018 is going to be running for re-election in 2020. Mm -hmm. Uh, That includes AOC. That includes uh, a whole lot of uh, women. And those women are going to be uh, signing the spending bills, voting on the spending bills coming out of the House. And uh, I hope to God we take the Senate. Um, by the way, a junior dude, our son, who is a political science major in college and is a real um, vote counter. <laughs> Let me put it that way. He really mm-hmm. gets it. Uh, and and he was not too upset about Warren dropping out. He was uh, very sanguine about it. You know, he's a Warren supporter and knocked on doors for Warren in Iowa. But he immediately kind of clicked over to, OK, where are the votes? What's happening? How are we going to get to where he wants to go? He's going to vote for Sanders in the Illinois primary. And uh, he feels strongly that if we keep up the turnout numbers that we are, and the turnout in Virginia particularly for the Virginia primary was high. Um, our, some of our prime turnout numbers are better than 2018, uh, 2016, and that is very good news. It's incredibly encouraging. Yeah, um, yeah no, that, I couldn't agree more. If we keep that up, if we're able to keep that up, the map for 2022 for the Senate is very positive for Democrats. There are a lot of uh, retiring people who've already announced they're leaving. There's a mm-hmm. uh, change in demographics, which is terrific for us. You know, he even went so far as to say, look, I, it would be horrible for the country if Trump was reelected. But I'm telling you, the Senate will go blue if Trump's reelected in 2022. The Senate will be blue. Don't worry about it. The Senate will says, be blue. Says junior dude. Junior dude. Junior well, dude. No one. Inevitably. I trust his opinion. Yeah, I do. I, I trust his opinion. Mm-hmm. Because and he, the thing that worries him is if it's Biden or Sanders in the White House in 2020, which he wants, that we sleep on our laurels then. That we say, okay, de- Democratic president, we're all set. We can sit back. We don't have to think about politics for another four years. And the midterms go to people that Sean Hannity, it'll be 2010 again. You know, the people that Sean Hannity is screaming at will turn out and we won't. And we can't let that happen. So I hope we can, I hope we have changed. <laughs> I know a lot of us want to go back to some sort of normalcy and not have to deal with being terrified about politics and ginned up on politics 24-7 all the time mm-hmm. worried about it. Mm-hmm. it it's got to become part of our dna that we vote blue every time every election everywhere yes uh, and encourage and encourage, encourage others everyone we know do. to do that yeah. raise our little ones to do that and we shouldn't um, we shouldn't need four more years of donald trump to do that mm-hmm. um and and you know like i said uh junior dude is is not a neurotypical <laughs> when he no. says you know, if Trump gets reelected, we have a better chance of turn, flipping the Senate 22 than if he doesn't. He just means that, technically speaking. From a, he's looking from at a his map. He's looking at his point map. Of view. Yes. He's, he's our own Steve Kornacki. He is our own Steve Kornacki. He doesn't, he's not making <laughs> he's judgments. He's a spectrum kid who no. is just looking at the map and saying, here's what, ha- here's mm-hmm. what turnout is like for people out of power in the White House. The turnout for the opposing party is higher. And he's right. That's true. So uh, long story short. (laughs) I would remind people uh, very briefly that Frederick Douglass uh, started off despising Abraham Lincoln. Yes, right, right. I looked up a quote just to make sure I got it right, that um, he, he, uh, his comment on Lincoln's inaugural address was that Lincoln was a little better than our worst fears. Wow. Like, yeah. And just thought he was at the worst, yeah. just the worst. Yeah. Just a craven, capitulating compromiser, mm-hmm. et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. Where have I he heard was. that before? <laughs> which he absolutely was. And, and there is, that is a, a tension built into our country and our politics. Yeah. Um, inflamed and laced into our our DNA by race. And it just is. Mm -hmm. And there will always be people for whom no progress is fast enough. Yeah. And there will be other people for whom any progress is too much. Yep. And if you find yourself anywhere in between those poles, you're going to be hated by a lot of people. Now, mind you, I'm not talking about both sides do it. 
There was one, poli- let me repeat this for the umpteenth time on this podcast. There was one political party in this country that has lost its goddamn mind. Yeah. That is absolutely despicable from top to bottom. There's nothing left in it worth saving, which leaves everyone else under one big fraying tent. Which is horrible. Yeah. Which it's is horrible. Really horrible. It, shouldn't, it, sh- yeah. it shouldn't be that way. There's a long ass list of things that I think shouldn't be. I mean, just start me off with the New York Times editorial, you know, op-ed page. Right. A lot of people shouldn't be there. They don't care what I think. Right. So saying that X or Y or Z should not exist is not really an option for people without power. It is true that this is the case, but it is also true that within our party of where all the same people went, we're going to gouge each other's eyes out and or, or, or yeah. we're going to gouge each other's eyes and we're going to, we're going to lock elbows. We're going to hit each other in the face because we're crowded in together. Mm-hmm. We're mm-hmm. all stuck in this one party yep. and there should be four parties. Yeah. But yeah. the reason for that, the overall reason for that is that there's no relief valve for it because the only other viable party are full of goons and, and monsters Nazis. and racists yes. and grifters <laughs> right. and Nazis. Yeah. And, and none of us want that. I think I'm pretty safe to say that the, for the most craven moderate among us to the most radical re- revolutionary among us, none of us want that to be the future of our country, no, right? right? We can all agree to that. Right. And the question then is, how do we achieve the goals that we all agree on? And I wrote a long post today, and I'm not going to repeat it, but it is a fundamental misunderstanding among us about what the actual goal of change really is. I would pair what you wrote today with what mm-hmm. was written in Wonkat. The owner of Wonkat wrote a really good article about clean for Jean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of these people that got haircuts mm-hmm. and put neckties on and went canvassing for Jean McCarthy in 1968. Yep. And they, they did it because they want they wanted the war to end. Yes, they did. Yes. <laughs> and so they dressed like squares so they could talk to squares yes. who were, you know, they they might have personally felt that the people they were talking to were horrible capitulators and yeah. uh, part of the middle class system, man. Yep. And I don't want to have to deal with them. But uh, Eugene McCarthy got them to uh, get their haircuts, not be a hippie, wear nice clothes and go door to door to explain that, no, Eugene Senator Eugene McCarthy is a U.S. senator who simply wants to end the war in Vietnam. Yes. And they did that so that they could end the war in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. That's what they wanted to do. And the goal was let's have this policy goal and we will, we will sacrifice our uh, hippie dumb and our hair and our whatever Mm -hmm. to communicate this idea. Yes. Right. Yes. And so Wonkette today is saying, look, um, (laughs) <laughs> and the way she put it was was rather insulting to the Chapo Chapo guys. Uh-huh. Uh, but she said, you know, please put on your little Lord Fauntleroy <laughs> <laughs> manners and uh, be polite to the uh, Warren people. Be polite to former Hillary people. Be polite to... Uh, other burners be be polite to biden people and communicate why you want the policies that bernie sanders wants and you know it's a long article and and i highly recommend both your article to kind of explain the the schism that's going on between revolutionaries and moderates Mm -hmm. and the the explainer on won't get of communication and and building a a communication set that allows you to, to share ideas and get people on your side uh, i don't know if it'll work or not with everyone but it doesn't uh, quite rhyme but i would recommend stay sunny for sanders Ooh, wow just try not to be an asshole online if you're advocating to get someone elected and there's you're talking to someone who's undecided yeah. If you if you come to the conversation assuming that the reason you're not backing my candidate must be you're acting in bad faith or you're stupid, um, you have you, there's no way you're going to convince me because it, it it just it comes off you like a reek like a yeah. stink. Don't be that guy. It, I I want you to succeed. I want you to win. 
I want those policies to be enacted. Yeah. I and want I'm health care for everybody. Hard. I really do. Yes, I, I really, really, I really do. do. Yes, yes. And I really would like people to understand something about human nature yeah. and how you actually go about the, the job of persuading people because that really is your well, job. And I'm, but I'm and more terrified pers- because here's the deal. Most Sanders uh-huh. voters, most Sanders voters in 2016 did go out and vote for Hillary. They did. That's yes, just they a fact. Did. Absolutely, so I they think, did. I think is online fact. is blowing a lot of this up. Um, it is. Number two, uh, some of them are simply Russians or bots or whatever, and, and I get sure. that. Um, the th- it does not scare me that uh, online vitriol is going to frighten away uh, the Democratic base from voting for Bernie Sanders if he's the nominee. I just I don't no, believe that. No. I think people will vote for Sanders if he's the nominee. I know I will. In fact, I won't even be grumpy mm-hmm. about it. Um, no, I'll be sunny <laughs> for, Sanders. for Sanders. I'll be happy to vote for Sanders yeah. in the general election. OK, so the the thing that terrifies me more than than the fact that online people being funny or being being jocular or whatever, however you want to put it, you're going to turn off Sanders voters. Um, the thing that scares me more is. If Sanders wins and all of a sudden the some voters don't get everything they wanted immediately on January 20th. Yes. Well, and I don't that. know how to communicate. Again, I don't know how to communicate to folks that uh, you can't always get what you want. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. You should go and read Bernie Sanders' bill because it isn't M4A now. It's not. Uh, if if he passes it, great, and it will radically improve. It will rad- first of all, it will radically change our healthcare system. Uh, there is, um, and and it will provide more coverage for more people. It will. So, but it doesn't do it tomorrow. That's my point, and I, I'm worried about how expectations are being managed here, and I'm I'm not liking what I'm seeing. So. And and I'm afraid the I'm going to vote for John Anderson option is off the yeah. table. <laughs> well, and I, I used it. I, I'm still in thinking about it because you know, in the in the aftermath of the anger of her dropping out, I want to still vote for Warren. And now I'm thinking, is that is that yeah. a John Anderson vote? And I'm not. Yeah. I don't know. I'm i I'm, I'm still thinking about it. Uh, it's it's well, it's a primary. It is a primary. And That's I true. Still think- That's true. I John still Anderson think you was get to a general election vote. Yes, a general election yes. vote. And when it comes to the when it comes to November of this year, I will I will have under my belt um, many weeks, if not longer, of working on behalf of the Democratic nominee for Senate because we do have. And although he's going to just say, "Oh through, yeah, Dick um, Durbin, yeah, for, Dick Durbin for president and for Congress," and um, I will do so unashamedly and cheerfully and we will have uh lawn signs for each candidate in our front yard yes yes Yes. you do not need to worry about our support in the fall right now we are trying to figure out what to do with our one vote during a primary Mm -hmm. when we both believe that the best candidate is no longer in Mm -hmm. the race Mm -hmm. and may i say one other thing um you can say as much the, as you want. You're the sound editor. You can, you, the one, you can just the one bleep me out of this whole thing. The one major, major disagreement I have with Chapo Trap House is selling episodes. And I uh, I, well, I know, you know, and that tone and everything, their show is a completely different format from ours, includes a different audience from ours mostly. But um, they do one episode for free a week, and then they have one behind a paywall. And... Mm-hmm. We don't do that, and we don't do that because I consciously don't believe in it. I don't believe in in uh, hiding content from listeners. I just, I just don't. And so that's my big disagreement <laughs> with them. And and we sacrifice income for that. I know we do. I know if we yeah. had if we had the yeah, time I... and energy to put together two episodes and put one behind a paywall, we'd make more money. I know that, but I just, mm-hmm. I just have an aversion to that. So you know and i just do whatever my wife says so <laughs> let's do round up <laughs> shall we i do want to mention yeah. one other thing the week before last you might remember was the uh when we handed out the was no one more repressed than me award went to rob yeah. and last week it went to mark halperin this week i'd like to give it jointly to chris matthews and uh 
the Morning Joe crew. Oh, Lord. Uh, Chris Matthews, who got sacked by MSNBC for inappropriate behavior, and I would argue 30 years of being obnoxious and, and wrong and loud and shouty. And it was uh, – Junior Dude has said to me a couple of weeks ago, it really is time for him to retire. He's 75. He's and I just, went, you know, 75 is a good time to retire. Let's yeah. – he should retire. Yeah. I just – I'm reminded of Krusty the Clown, you know, resigning from comedy. <laughs> Why now, Rusty? Why not 20 years ago? Um <laughs> And but you can hear and the reason I'm I'm including him in this list is a I would like it on the record that Chris Matthews uh, this was the week that Chris Matthews got fired slash resigned on the air just basically dropped the microphone in Steve Kornacki's lap and set. walked out For Steve like, Kornacki, yeah nothing yeah. but class man um, but you can hear the gears grinding um, with Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski as they get up on their hind legs to talk about cancel culture and how yeah. unfair it was to to Chris Matthews. Because part of them wants to be considered woke, yeah, uh, and uh, they, they, they want to talk about accountability, and they want to talk about you know holding people to high standards. They want to talk about it's me tooism and so on and so forth. They want to be seen as that, but you can see their obvious horror when it happens to one of their own friends. Right, right. Accountability is for other people. And when it comes when when the not when the sh- in our industry no, in our building not yes in, not in our family and when, yeah. when it's happened now you know to a number of people who work for N- NBC and or MSNBC and you can just see every time they get real uncomfortable when the accountability police come for them did um, did they get up on their hind legs for Melissa Harris Perry though oh Melissa Harris who never heard of her uh-huh. don't know who that might be <laughs> I thought so yeah I thought so let's do a news roundup all right. All right, all the corona stuff. We're going to talk about that coronavirus stuff. Uh, The White House prohibited audio and video at a coronavirus briefing. Yes, they did. Uh, Donald Trump has doubled down on his debunked lie that somehow Barack Obama is to blame for lack of coronavirus testing kits. Trump called the coronavirus the Democrats' new hoax and accused them of, quote, politicizing, unquote, the deadly virus. And we mentioned Nancy Pelosi forced Donald Trump to adequately fund the American coronavirus response efforts and then had a signing ceremony to rub his face in it. Uh, we are recording this before we figure out there's rumors that Mick Mulvaney is going to resign. We're not we don't know about that yet. So mm-hmm. shrug your shoulders. I don't know. Uh, but White House Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney played down the deadly coronavirus that has caused U.S. stock markets to plummet telling top conservatives that wall-to-wall news coverage of the disease is a ploy to hurt his boss, President Donald Trump, and advised Americans to turn off their television sets. Yeah. Ignore it. He should start with his boss. Yeah. Well, (laughs) and this is is not a Um, one-off. Trump's top advisor, economic advisor, uh, drunk Larry Kudlow, who apparently is just drunk all the time now, um, says American workers should, quote, stay at home. Um. No, oh, I'm sorry, work. stay at work. I, I'm sorry, stay at work despite the coronavirus. He was very insistent about that. And he was on CNBC, and the anchor pointed out that the former FDA commissioner has criticized the administration for doing exactly this sort of thing, encouraging people to do things they shouldn't do, which helps spread the virus. But, you know, who cares? Mm-hmm. Trump touted the positive impact of coronavirus. It's affecting the airline business. People are staying in our country, and they're shopping, and they're using our hotels. So some from that same point, I think there's a positive impact. Yeah. Cause there's always a spin, man. It's, I didn't bankrupt a casino. I created jobs in the unemployment market. Um, <laughs> Donald Trump told his work wife, Sean Hannity, that he thinks the world health organization estimates of the coronavirus's death rate is fake news. Quote. I think the 3.4% number is, is really a false number. Now, this is just my hunch, because you know how accurate that shit is. But based on a lot of conversations with voices in his head, personally, I'd say the number is way under 1%. Trump's Secretary of Defense warned commanders not to make any decisions related to the coronavirus that might surprise the White House. Uh Uh-huh. Mark Esper issued the directive via a conference call telling commanders deployed overseas that they must first clear any decisions related to protecting their troops with the White House. Now, this is some straight-up fascist shit. This is ordering your troops to not protect themselves in order to spare the dear leader from embarrassment. 
right. that really is Stalinist Hitler shit. Um, now, remember the GOP freaking out and calling for Obama to be impeached for trading five, count them, five Taliban prisoners for Bo Bergdahl? Well, Donald Trump has signed an agreement to negotiate an agreement with the Taliban, which would release 5,000 Taliban prisoners. Now, at around the time that Ivanka, his daughter, was tweeting roomy poems to the Taliban about a place beyond rightness and wrongness, and one day we'll meet there in blissful ecstasy, which I swear to God she actually did, the Taliban were tearing up their pre-agreement agreement and resuming attacks on the Afghan government. Which uh, Donald Trump responded to with, no fair. No fair. You, you said you yeah. wouldn't do that. It's no fair. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying the the situation isn't fraught and complicated and anyone's going to look bad and I want us the hell out of that country. But the worst possible person you can put in charge of anything from foreign policy to controlling uh, response to an epidemic is Donald fucking Trump. He has no credibility with anyone in the world. No, at all. At all. And uh, on that note, uh, CNN fact check Donald Trump's Fox News town hall and found he lied at least 13 times in one hour. And to, to make to calm everyone down, Donald Trump abruptly canceled the planned visit to CDC headquarters in Atlanta. Yeah, that's going to calm everybody down. Sure, Trump told his Trump told his Fox News audience, quote, we'll be cutting, unquote, entitlements like Medicare and Social Security. And in more War on Science news, an Interior Department official inserted wingnut bullshit about climate change in the agency's official scientific reports, including debunked claims that increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is actually beneficial. And he wasn't fired. No. The Trump administration added a new litmus test that candidates for political appointments must now complete. Candidates applying for a job in the Trump administration have to explain what part of Trump's campaign message most appeals to them and why. It's his big pouty lips. I just can't resist. Um, the Bernie Sanders, I put this in myself, the Bernie Sanders bad lip reading Obama ad kicked up some kind of controversy this week. That was Well, the and I, I thought it was funny that on MSNBC last night, the Bernie Sanders Obama ad and the Biden Obama ad we're back to back during yeah. Rachel Maddow's interview yeah. with Elizabeth Warren. Well, and, um. <laughs> and the reason the Bernie, you know, you can run whatever ad you want, but mm -hmm. it was cut together with pieces of conversations, and a lot of that was taken out of context, which happens in political ads. What mm -hmm. makes it more problematic for anyone who's on, let's say, the internet, is his national campaign co-chair Nina Turner just a few weeks ago was mocking other candidates for using the black president as a prop, mm -hmm, as a crutch. Mm -hmm. No, you've got to stand on your own two feet. How dare you use Barack Obama as a crutch? Get out there and, and run your own campaign. And then Super Tuesday happens, and suddenly there's Bernie Sanders, my very good friend Barack Obama, and I and agree. And it was like, okay, I get it. I get it. You're up against the wall. You're doing what you can. But please... If, if you have that in the can and you might use it, you might want to think about not telling your campaign co-chair to go out in public and explain to people that anyone who runs that sort of ad is bullshitting them. That mm -hmm. would have been a good thing to think through before you did it. Three years ago, Jared Kushner's stake in a digital platform for smaller investors in commercial properties called Cadre was worth $5 million. He just sold it for $25 to $50 million after it benefited from opportunity zone tax breaks that Kushner himself pushed for. Yeah, yeah. Um, in California's 25th Congressional District primary race, Schenck Uger and George Papadopoulos both lost, and they lost massively. So damn you, deep state. Damn you. <laughs> I think that just goes to show you that in congressional races, mm -hmm. it is really hard to be a carpetbagger. Oh, yeah. statewide races in New York, especially they're used to voting for someone outside the state, you know, who comes in to run. But uh, when you get, the more local you get, the more the less likely it is that someone who comes in from the outside or appears to be an outsider is going to win. This yeah. is why I don't run for the Senate in Illinois. Just, you know, <laughs> there's all kinds of reasons Drift Glass doesn't run for the Senate That's in true. Illinois. OK, uh, the Supreme Court agreed to take up a legal challenge to the Affordable Care Act during its term. Starting in October. Surprise. Surprise. And 
A coalition of 19 states are suing to block the Trump administration's looting of $3.8 billion from the Pentagon budget to build Trump's stupid border wall. Also, a federal judge is now asking to look at the unredacted yeah. Mueller report <laughs> yeah. to find out if Bill Barr lied about it. And, of course, Bill Barr did lie about it. So uh, we'll we'll be interested to see how that unfolds. Mm -hmm. Uh, we already talked about J.B. Pritzker. We did, J.B. But we're glad to have – you know what we're really glad to have in Illinois? A Democratic, a Democratic governor. governor. It, what he's working on now is is trying to get through a restructuring of the tax system here, which is written into our constitution, so it's really hard to do, to have a progressive income tax so that you pay more percentage-wise the more income you have. And you know who's going to pay a lot of taxes under that plan? Pritzker. J.B. Pritzker, yeah. yes. Yeah, but so is Rauner, so you know, I'm uh -huh. okay with that. Both sides. Okay. Each week, we post our Facebook page and website, an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week's internet pet is Elizabeth Warren's dog, Bailey, and his burrito. Yes. Uh, the burrito looks to have been freshly poured, you know. Mm -hmm. So we are going to use the term Bailey's burrito around the house for that thing we just have to have, no matter the consequences. <laughs> you know, you got donuts? I'm going to Bailey's burrito that thing. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it is Lent. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay all right <laughs> hey uh like i said bailey's burrito is probably freshly poured we have our fake sponsor freshly poured cat food whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct your cat or dog will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the only food they eat is freshly poured freshly poured freshly poured oh my lord it's freshly poured and we want to thank it msnbc yes we do we want to thank msnbc for putting bailey dog d massachusetts <laughs> on the chiron <laughs> we use that screen grab for our picture of bailey you can visit bailey at our facebook page or website or all over the internet and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address proleftpodcast at gmail.com where you can also write to both of us Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. And Drift Class, it's about time we did another letter show. I think, I think. you're right, Blue Gal. You know? I think you're right. Now it's Super Tuesday is over for a lot of people. We'd love to hear from you about what your what your plans are for the general election, who you're working for down ballot. Uh, let us know. We'd love just, to hear from just you. Just go on and put in the, the subject line, letter show. Uh, letter show. Because, so we know to look for yeah. those emails. Thank right. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal, postal address information, there's merch and all kinds of good stuff at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, in honor of Daylight Savings Time this weekend, the Internet Kitties plan to sleep right through Daylight Savings Time. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions.